the first uh, uh, invitation I will give to uh, Tim, Tim Wright from C uh, CEO of Water Aid, and we've heard so much of Water Aid um, today. And my question to you is, you is how has the evidence based around water interventions informed water aid's work in cholera affected countries? We heard about Zambia, but we would want to hear globally. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Dr. Kadri. And I just wanted to say how uh, delighted we are to be members of the Global Task Force and uh, proud to take over as the host of the WASH Working Group, uh, taking over from UNICEF, who've been doing that for the last few years. So you asked about evidence. Well, I think we all know that the evidence that WASH, Water Sanitation and Hygiene, is the long-term solution to cholera. Uh, well, that's been known for more than a hundred years. Um, and, and so we don't know, we don't really need to look for an evidence base for that. And yet, as you have just said, Dr. Kadri, some of those global statistics about the three billion who can't wash their hands at home illustrate that there is a very widespread spread problem in terms of the access to water sanitation and hygiene globally. Um, and indeed, we know Water Aid has recently done studies to illustrate the fact that the level of investment in this area is far too low for the SDGs, SDG 6 in particular, to be achieved, uh, not, not remotely by 2030. So there is a bit of a problem, there is a very big global problem about getting sufficient political attention and sufficient finances in place um, to provide water sanitation and hygiene for all, especially those in the poorest countries in the world. This needs action. In this area though, if we look at cholera, I think more can be done and in a targeted way. And I think the work of the Global Task Force and their work on hotspot targeting gives us a way of tackling this in the shorter term and making progress in this area. And, um, and it's been shown that by, because the targeting is good, um, it's giving a better return on investment. So the normal four to, four to one cost benefit ratio that one sees with WASH um, interventions can be increased to 10 to one uh, with the use of the hotspot targeting. So that gives us one good piece of news. Um, and also, I think, as has been said by other speakers earlier, the oral vaccine does buy us time, the three years. We shouldn't be looking at this as a long-term solution. We all know that the long-term underlying uh, causes of uh, cholera can only really be tackled through WASH, but it does buy us time. Um, and so, um, and uh, my final point in, in, in this is to say that it's, if we target things, some of the targets are much more affordable. So for instance, um, it, we can tackle uh, the lack of water sanitation and hygiene in healthcare facilities, uh, and one can reach 80% of healthcare facilities in, in least developed countries for a cost of 3.6 billion. Uh, and that in global terms is an affordable price. So I won't speak for any longer, we're running out of time. Just to say political will is clearly needed. And we have seen some great examples of this on this call, many different different ministries taking part. Uh, the, recent, the last example from Zambia, a great example where political will is in place and action is being taken. Um, cholera is something that targets the very poorest, the people with no wash. And this uh, global task force has set out with its roadmap and with its targeting, a clear pathway to success. So let's get behind it and let's make it happen. Thank you.